From London, we present a play for radio by Max Marquis. Dead Drop. Did you hear anything? Like what? I don't know. A collision, something like that. No, Jim. Oh, you know, Hampstead Heath really is marvellous. We could be miles from town, right in the country, instead of, well, about three miles from Euston. Hmm. I think I'll have to move up to Hampstead one day. A bit expensive. It depends. Yes, I suppose you're right. Unless we both... There's no chance of that. No. Well, not for a while, anyway. What's that? Look, there's someone lying by the roadside. Uh, oh, it's, it's probably a drunk or a tramp. We, we don't want to... Oh, we can't it. just leave him there. He'll be all right when he steps it off. But Harold, stop. We've got to go back well, and have a... It's not up to us. Harold! I'll go, you stay in the car. I'll come with you. I'd rather you didn't. He's very still. Harold, his eyes are open. June, keep away. He's dead. What? How? I, I don't know, heart attack, I suppose. Isn't that blood on the road? N no, oil. It's these yellow lights, they make things look different. Well, come on, back to the car. But He's can't... dead now, come on. But, how would you come on. my arm? Then hurry up! God. I told you to stay here. I try to forget it. I'll give you a drink in a minute. We've got to report it. We don't want to get involved. But we have Look, to. Look, the pair of us out together at this time of night. We've only been for, for a drink. drink. June. Probably get our names in the papers. Policemen calling at us at work, inquest. Well, we've got to do something. Why? But somebody might have killed him. Oh, come on. Look, there's a phone box. I'll call the police anonymously and tell them what we saw. How's that? Well, uh, well what more can we tell them than what we saw? All right, but, but I'll phone. Well, if you like. But no names, though. No. Distribution? Harold, it's me. I have to see you now. Uh, I'm afraid we're rather busy at the moment. Can I call you back? No, it's important. Well, I'll see. It can't wait. Very well. I'll come along now. Where is it to be picked up, please? I'll meet you at uh, Westminster Underground Station. Say ten minutes. Fifteen at the outside. Now look, June. What's all this about? I had to spin a yarn to my chief about a file going Read missing. Read that. Have you got me out just to... Read it. Hampstead Police, answering a 999 call made late last night by an, an anonymous woman reporting a dead man by the roadside at the Heath, found no trace of a body. A search was carried out and resumed at first light this morning without success. It was either a hoax or a drunk who got up and walked away, a local police spokesman said. But there was a body there. They couldn't have missed it. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps it was a drunk, after all. It, uh, it could even have been... You said yourself he was dead. Well, keep your voice down. Look, we can't talk here. Let's, let's go onto the bridge. We've got to do something. June, let's think for a moment. If it would have caused trouble to report it and give our names last night, how much more of a mess would it be now? I don't Look, see that. Gosh... <sighs> Look, you're pretty, but sometimes you're not very bright for your grade. Two civil servants out for a night's boozing at the Spaniards, followed by a bit of you-know-what in the bushes. Well, we didn't! Yeah, don't I know it? Oh, be serious. I am. No, really, that's how it'll look. But we... Wait! There's Sybil. If she suspects I might want a divorce, that I've got someone... That, well, that I love... Darling. Well, she'll hang on forever just to be a bitch. I don't know. There was a dead man there. I thought he was he dead. He was. 
What happened to him? We've got to report it, give them full details. Why? No, listen. What more can we tell them than we've told them already? What good would it do? At least they'll know. Will they? I'm not so sure. And let's face it, we did have a few drinks. I wouldn't have fancied my chances with the breathalyzer. I could have been wrong. It looks as if I was. Now, let's forget it, darling. It can't do any good. And it might do us... our chances a lot of harm. Mm. But forget it. You won't go to the police. Oh. All right. Promise? Promise. I'm Inspector McAndrew, CID. The desk sergeant says you claim you saw a dead body in Windmill Lane last night. That's right. I made the 999 call. Yes, I've, uh, I've got the report. We uh, didn't find any dead bodies. There was one. Then I wonder what happened to it. I don't know, but he was dead. <sighs> Look, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Corney, you'd be surprised how many dead bodies on the heath we get reported. But when we get there, they're either drunk or just plain shagged out, if you see what I mean. This one was dead. He was lying there with his eyes open. Very well. Let's start from the beginning. What time was this? 11.15, 11.20. Were you on foot? Driving? Driving. Towards town. I'd been to meet a friend for a drink at the Spaniards. Were you alone? Yes. Are you sure? Of course. Well, you saw this uh, body by the roadside. Yes. Well, there was this man lying there, one arm sort of half under his head. His eyes were open. He was dead. How did you know? You could tell. So I, I, I drove onto a phone box and dialed 999. But you didn't wait? No. Why? I didn't want to get involved. Statements, inquest, all that. But you are involved. You've, uh, you've come back all the way from um, SW15. Why? I had to. I read in the paper about you're not finding the body. I, I realised there was something wrong. How long had he been dead? I don't know. Oh, was he warm, cold, stiff? I didn't touch him. Because you could see he was dead. You didn't need to feel for a pulse or anything. No. He had his arm half under his head. Yes. As though he was sleeping. Well? He wasn't asleep. Can you describe him? Oh, it was all rather... Well, you know, he, he was, what, a medium sort of man. I didn't look all that closely. No. I don't suppose you did. What's that supposed to mean, Inspector? Just agreeing with you, miss. Well, thank you very much. You've been most helpful. Come in. Hello, Petra. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Hart. Oh, Mr. Coleman won't be a moment. Mmm, I like that suit. Thank you. Oh, what have you been doing while I was away? Oh, nothing. It's been very dull. I'm ready, Petra. Very good, Mr. Coleman. You can go in now. On my hands and knees, or may I walk this time? <laughs> oh, hello, Hart. That Cambridge business all finished now? One dead, two arrested, and one recalled. Yes, I'd say it was finished. Fancy being sent to Cambridge to spy. Here, have a look at this newspaper cutting room. Hampstead Police answering a 999 call. Oh, no, 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 no. Dead man by the roadside found no trace of a body. A hoax or a drunk who walked away. Well? You might go up there and find out if there's anything in it. In this? You're joking. Hmm? No. No, of course not. Not you. Good afternoon. Do I make it official or shall I go to stores and draw a false beard? Official, but don't be heavy-handed about it. Better take Bellamy with you. Who was the copper up there? The officer who dealt with the matter is Inspector McAndrew. <coughs> um, yes, I'm Inspector McAndrew. What have we done to get your lot on our back? I don't know, really. Somebody reported a dead body by the roadside last night, but when you got there... You're not here about that, isn't it, tiresome? <coughs> it, it, it was a drunk. Ah, you found him. No, it must have been. Couldn't it have been a hoax? No. How do you know? The informant came in and told us there was a body. Insisted. But you didn't find it? There wasn't any body. And I wonder why she thought there was. Hysterical? Frustrated? How should I know? Can I have her name and address? 
Miss June Coney, 19 Album Court, the Terrace SW15. What was she like? 25, medium height, pleasant features, dark hair. Sensible? Well? She seemed so. Neither hysterical nor frustrated, then? Not when she came here, but I'm not a psychiatrist. And I wonder why she said there was a body. There was no body. No body. We had a whole squad of men searching all round the area. We didn't even find a dead rabbit. She saw a tramp having a snooze. Mm. And if your department has time to waste on this sort of thing, we haven't. So if there's nothing else... Just one more thing. Do you have a copy of your report with Miss Coney's statement in it? Be my guest. You've been most helpful. There's nothing in it. Believe me. I expect you're right. You're going to drop it, then? Uh, not quite. What, then? Reconstruction of the crime, in a manner of speaking. Having a look at the place where Miss Coney thought she saw a body. No, but it's dark. Well, it was dark when she saw whatever she saw. You people must have time to waste. And if you could have one of your men call my driver from the canteen? With pleasure. Sergeant Thomas, will you get the driver? Take it easy, Bellamy. It was around here somewhere. She was supposed to have seen a body. 300 yards past the bend, near a broken down public bench. Huh. Yes, this'll be it. Do you want me to come? Might as well. Lock the car, though. It'd be too embarrassing. What are we supposed to see in the dark? Good question. Lie down, will you? Sir? There, by the roadside. Oh, I've got my good suit on. I'm flattered. I'll lend you a brush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the light's good enough. These sodium lamps aren't very lovely, but they're effective. She would have been able to see you properly. Why the devil did Coleman send me up here? Uh, all right to get up now? Hmm? Oh, yes. See that? There's a light through the trees there. Well, perhaps it's a lamppost on, on a pathway or something. No, I don't think so. Let's have a look. And don't step on any courting couples. Blimey! Rabbit. Oh, of course. No, that's not a lamppost, but there's a road there, I think. It's... It's a house. Yeah, it's, it's a light in a house. Uh huh. Big place, too. Funny. I didn't realize the road had bent so much. I sense the direction was all wrong. This must be. Yes, I thought I recognized it. You know it? Oh, yes, I know it. The most burglar proof house in North London. It's got a front gate you couldn't drive a tank through and a big notice beside it Soviet permanent cultural mission to the United oh, Kingdom. Fair. The good old <laughs> cultural KG Bay. KGB. And that's why Coleman sent me up here. I'll have two bets with you, Bellamy. Hmm? I bet there was a body, and I bet they know in there where it went. Good evening. Miss June Coney? Yes? My name is Hart, Ministry of Defence. Here's my authority. I see. May I come in, please? Do I have a choice? Thank you. Charming flat. I hope this isn't too terribly inconvenient. That depends how long you take. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, in here. Miss Coney, you reported finding a body by the roadside at Hampstead Heath the other night. Oh, not that. There was a body. The police talked me out of it for a while, but there was a body. Yes, I expect there was. What? I expect there was. Well, uh, would you like some coffee? If it's no trouble. It's already made. You live here alone? Yes. Pleasant for you. And the reason I asked, well, if you'll forgive me, I do know that Admiralty clerks, even your grades, aren't all that well paid. And this is rather a splendid place. Actually, I'm a controlled tenant. Well, that sounds very self-possessed. Pay a controlled rent. You know I work at the Admiralty, then? You told Inspector McAndrew. Oh. Thank you. Mmm. I say, this is good coffee. Would you mind telling me about it? What? Oh, finding the body, I mean. I told it all to the police. Oh, very well. I was coming home from the Spaniards along Windmill Lane when I How saw... were you coming? In my car. Uh, this is in my statement to the police. Oh, that's pity. 
I should have asked to see it, I suppose. Still... Well, I was driving along when the I The Spaniards. Saw... Why did you go there? I like it. Long way, though, isn't it? Right the other side of London. I like it. Did you go on your own? Yes. Or come back with anyone? No. Did you arrange to meet anyone there? No. Look, what's this got to do with finding a body? I really can't imagine. Anyway, you went to the Spaniards on your own, met no one there and came back on your own. Yes. Oh, of course, you didn't have much to drink. Well, I wasn't drunk, if that's what you're suggesting. Oh, well, certainly not. I just mean you wouldn't have many as you were driving. Yes. Now, the body. Well, as I was driving along, I saw this man by the edge of the road. I, I pulled up and went back to him and... Did you see anybody near the man? No. Were there any other cars about? No. Well, when you got out of the car, you must have looked in the mirror to see if there was anything coming up behind you. Uh, no, I was on the... Uh, uh, bit wound up. I, I didn't look, but no car did go past me, fortunately. No cars about, no people. Oh, it must have been rather creepy. Yes. That was courageous of you, I must say. I, I, I didn't think. How was he, exactly? Who? The man by the roadside. Oh, he was lying slightly on his side with his head on his arm, almost as if he were asleep. But he wasn't. You're quite sure? His eyes were open. Oh, I see. Could you describe him, do you think? I'm sorry. He was very ordinary. When you saw him, what did you say? My God, he's dead, or something like that. To yourself, of course. Of course. Then you telephoned the police from the next call box without giving your name and address. I didn't want to be involved. But you went back to the police afterwards. I changed my mind. Oh, I see. Is that all? No. Just one more thing. Who was with you? I told Please, you. Please, Miss I thought... Coney. An attractive young woman doesn't drive halfway across London on her own, drink on her own, drive back on her own. You weren't sitting in the driving seat of whoever's car it was. You didn't go back and look at the body on your own. And when you saw it, you spoke to someone. Well? You're quite wrong. But they're bound to remember you at the Spaniards. What is it? You having an affair with another woman? Certainly not. That's a... Ah, so it's a married man. Look, I just want to talk to him. His wife won't be involved. They're separated. If she knew about me... Well, not me exactly, but that Harold has a girlfriend. I understand. Harold said... If we both gave our names to the police and the story got out, you know what people would say. Two civil servants out for a night's boozing and a bit of slap and tickle in the edges. So your friend is a civil servant too. That'll make it easier to call on him at his work. Is he at the Admiralty? Yes. Harold Robson. He's in distribution at Thorley House. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for the coffee. Mr Hart? Yes? Why are you making inquiries? Well, the police, I could understand, but D.I. Oh, and whatever it it's is. it's routine when it's a Ministry of Defence employee that's involved. Oh, yes, of course. The body, what, what do you think happened to it? Well, if you must know, I think it got up and walked away. But you said that, 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 you... That, that was a slight abridgment of the truth. I really mean I expect there was something that looked like a body. Very like a body. I see. I'm sorry. You know, it's one of the unfortunate facts of life that the people who answer questions have to tell the truth, but not those who ask them. Now, I'm one of the askers. Good night, Mr. Hart. Good night, Miss Coney. Mr. Robson, my name is Hart. I expect Miss Coney has told you about me. No. Really? Well, I'm from the Ministry of Defence. Let me hear. I see. Is it all right to talk here? Well, if you'd like to come into my office... Well, the government aren't any more generous with space than they are with money, are they? Well, it's the size of office appropriate to my grade, I suppose. What do you do here, Mr Robson? Well, I record the, uh, the movement of all the files and manuals and books, things like that. I make sure they get to the people who ask for them, that they're signed for, and that they go back to their appropriate section. Uh -huh. I've seen Miss Coney. She told me all about your finding that man at Hampstead Heath the other night. Oh. She said she wouldn't tell anyone. Well, obviously, she had second thoughts. It was the right thing to do. I am afraid I have questions to put to you. And uh, June explained uh, about us and uh, my wife. Yes. Well, I suppose you must think it was selfish, but... Well, he was dead. At least I thought he was. Didn't really look all that carefully. 
There was nothing we could do. To tell you the truth, at the time, I didn't even want to phone the police. But someone might have killed him and left him there. Or killed him? By the roadside. And what happened to the body? <sighs> well, I must have been wrong. He looked dead, but... Well, thank you, Mr. Robson. But, Mr. Hart, there, there's no need for anyone else to know about this. I mean... Well, if my wife thought I had a girlfriend... It's not that I mean anything to her. I, I expect she'll divorce me sooner or later. But if she thinks I want my freedom because I've got someone... She'll hang on just to spite me. I understand. Do you, Mr. Hart? I doubt it. People don't know what it's like if they haven't lived it. It, it eats away at you. So if you do find someone worthwhile, like June, you'll do anything to hang on to them. Almost anything. Well, I don't see any point in making this public. Any of it. Thanks. Thanks very much. Hello, Petra. Hello, Mr. Hart. Mr. Coleman's expecting you. You look blooming. It is spring. Mm, for you, maybe. It comes a little late for me. Later every year. I can wait. Tut, tut. Well, now. If Hart's there, send him in, Petra. Yes, Mr. Coleman. Story of my life. I'd love to hear it. Soon. <laughs> well? Do you mind if I sit down first? I saw the woman who found the body, June Coney. She'd been out drinking with her boyfriend, Harold Robson. They both work in the Admiralty. She's a typist. He's one step above a messenger. He's married, so they didn't want to get mixed up in anything. Oh, God, these people with messy private lives. Was there a body? You know damn well there was. That's why you sent me. And you know damn well where it went. Into the house on the hill. The K. Gay Bay branch office. What did you tell Miss Coney and Robson? Oh, I told them they were mistaken. It must have been a drunk who got up and staggered away. And? Well, she didn't believe me, but she will eventually. And he doesn't care one way or the other. I suppose he just wants to stay out of trouble. Who doesn't? Do you still keep sherry in that cupboard? Yes. Thank you. Well, what's it all about? Uh, there was a, a new arrival at the cultural mission last night. Sergei Penkarsky. You know him, of course. Oh, yes. General Penkarsky of the KGB. One of the old-time survivors. He's about as cuddly as an Epstein statue and as cultural as a kick in the crutch. I do wish you'd leave your vulgarities at the door. I like shoes at a mosque. I've been getting information out of the cultural mission. Just as I suppose they've been getting it in? Undoubtedly. Yes, I had a man inside. Had? I fancy he was the disappearing body at the roadside. Some time ago, my man reported he thought he was under suspicion and he asked for the message passing system to be changed. So you did? I didn't. It would have been too complicated. I told him to be careful. I'm sure he was grateful for the advice. No messages came out for a while. Now they've started coming out again in the correct code. Well, then he's all right. The correct code, except for one thing. The security check is missing. Well, what about the quality of the information? Uh, it seems good, but it'll take a long time to verify. Now, as I see it, the probability is that they've killed my man, found his code book and list of drops, and decided to feed us misleading information. But I can't be sure... Oh, it's really most vexing. If they have killed your man, he probably thought it was rather more than vexing. Mm. To return to my hypothesis that the Russians have killed my man and he's using his code book, I want you to set up photo surveillance of all the drops. When the next drop is made, I intend to know who made it. It sounds so simple. But the opposition mustn't have a scintilla of a suspicion. How many drops was your man using? Here's the list. Oh, God. By the way, am I supposed to recognise anyone in these photographs? No, I am. What time is it? Uh, nearly 9.20. Oh, if we hurry, we can see the play of the month. Well, I, I don't think I should stay that late. Oh. Well, it's not over till nearly 11, by the time I get home. Yes. Well, darling. Mm, it's all right. It's, she's phoned a couple of times. Late. What for? Well, nothing, really. Just to check up on me, I suppose. Oh, only. What about the weekend? No, it should be all right. God, it's our last one before I go on leave. I uh, suppose you still haven't managed to persuade your chief to let you change your dates. I only wish I could. Well, shall we have our coffee in the other room? Yes, all right. What do you think really happened? About what? That night. Ooh. 
I, I thought he was dead at the time when you said he was. I suppose he must have been drunk or ill or something. No, I'm still pretty sure he was dead. Then what happened to him? No, it Oh, there, there have been lots of cases of crooks disappearing, gang warfare. Yes. Oh, just forget it. It's all ancient history now. None of our business anymore. Are you going to sit there just talking and drinking coffee all night? I've got to go soon. <laughs> Silver-tongued seducer, you. <laughs> What sort of people do you have working on this business, Hart? Failed beach photographers with box brownies. Look at these pictures. I think some of them are rather good. Particularly the one with the girl in the prominent jumper in the background. I'm in no mood for your juvenile flippancies this morning. Sorry. Three drops made and not a single decent picture of our man. I don't think that's the photographer's fault. They are good men. The subject was being very careful. He's a professional. Yes. Which possibly means, perhaps even probably means, it's a Russian plant using one of their men. Well, what about the messages they've dropped? As before, in the correct code, but without the security check. Yes, sounds very much as if your man has been clobbered. He was the body by the roadside. But you still want a photograph of the man they're using to make the plants? Of course. You know, it may be a new man we don't know yet, but if your people on photo surveillance can't do any better, we never shall. Is there something else? Well, a loose end. Robson. Harold Robson, the man who saw the body. Yes. Well, I checked his personal file. He was divorced five years ago. So... Well, the reason he and June Coney gave for not waiting for the police was that they didn't want his wife to find out about them and cause trouble. That's your loose end? Yes. I think you'd find more profitable loose ends in a plate of cold spaghetti. There is something wrong there. There are times, Hart, when you stagger me. Why should Robson be involved? All he did was drive past the body with his fancy piece. I mean, it's a thousand to one coincidence he was there at that particular moment. Not necessarily. What was he doing up there anyway, on that particular night? Oh, for God's sake. That there's something wrong with him. Something hidden, dishonest about him. No, he, he's worried. Oh, very well. Have a go at Robson. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. I think you're being completely irresponsible. And when you fall flat on your face, I shall put an adverse report into your file. I see. I shall enjoy thinking over the precise wording. Well, if you get stuck for a word, let me know. Petra, do me a favour, will you? Official or... Private. In office hours, official, of course. Oh, well. Call Central Registry and tell them I'm coming over. I want to have another look at that file on Harold Robson. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'll have a look at Miss June Coney's, too. Thanks, Petra. Think nothing of it. I run a 24-hour service. Comforts for the troops and all that. You do have my home number. Tattooed over my heart. Mm. Oh. Oh, I've had more enthusiastic greetings. Is this an inconvenient moment? Oh, no. I always ask people to call when I'm in the bath. Really? You must put me on an invitation list. You know what I mean. I suppose you'd better come in. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll wait while you get dry. I am now. This bathrobe's better than a couple of towels. Can I get you something to drink? I've got some coffee on again, actually. Thank you. Do your lot always call in the evenings? Uh-huh. That's when people are at home, usually. If we're lucky, we catch them in the bath. Ha, ha. What's it all about? Uh, the same old thing. But there's no hurry. Let's wait till we have our coffee. Uh, unless you've got a date. Oh, no. Matter of fact, I'm off on holiday tomorrow. Where? Costa Brava. Economy package tour. Well, the sun's the same, whatever the price. Going with anyone? No. You haven't broken it off with your boyfriend, Harold Robson? No. I've got an extra week. He can't get leave at the same time. That's all. Yes, it must be difficult with his wife and everything. Is that what you're here about? No, no, no. Sorry. I wasn't trying to be nosy. I, I was sympathising. You're sure it isn't some sort of security check to see if we'd be vulnerable to pressure, single girl, married man and all that? <laughs> what? These days? Besides, what do you know that could tilt the balance of power in Europe? True. Sorry, but I have to ask you this. Will you try and remember the other night? The man. Can you recall how he was dressed? Why are you bringing it all up again? Well, we're helping the police on this one. They're undermanned at Hampstead. It might have been the reglement de compte between villains. A what? A settling of accounts. Oh. Well, he... He was ordinary. Expensive clothes or cheap? Neither one thing nor the other. Not very fashionable, I don't think. What does Harold say? I haven't asked him. Men don't remember clothes as well as women. Even men's clothes. Yours are pretty memorable. Thank you. Can you remember what Mr. Robson said? Nothing, really. 
He was more concerned with keeping me away. And quite right, too. I suppose you've never seen the man before? No. At least I don't think so. Perhaps he'd look different from what he normally would, you know. Yes. Has anyone been reported missing? Lots. It happens every day. But without a description. And if he was a villain and he was dead, no one will report him missing. I suppose not. To think of it, he could have been dead and no one would know how it happened or why. Well, as you said before, he probably wasn't dead. Almost certainly wasn't. Did I? Well, that's the big city for you. What made you come to London? Well, same as everyone else, I expect. Streets of London paved with gold? Hardly. Anonymity? Maybe. Isn't that another name for loneliness? At first. But the freedom's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you can't cough in a Sussex village without everyone knowing it. It is a bit like that. Do you get home very often? Oh, one weekend a month, sometimes two. Your mother's still alive? Uh-huh. Uh, my father died during the war. Yes. I suppose she worries about you. Says she's sure you're not eating properly. Asks you if you're going to get married soon. <laughs> how did you know that? All <laughs> mothers are the same. So she doesn't know about Harold Robson? No. So that is what you've come about? No, no, just friendly interest. I'm afraid it doesn't sound like it. Looking up my personal file... Oh, yes, yes, you must have done. You knew where I came from about my father being dead Routine! My... Well, I'm sorry. It's not my sort of But routine. I didn't mean it to be an imposition. It's worse. It's an inquisition. Look, I assure you, I have no... If it's in... not, it's a rather nasty, clumsy pass, and I can do without either. Thank you very much. Good night. Yes, uh, June... Uh, Miss Coney did phone and tell me you'd been to see her. Mr. Robson, you weren't frank with me. Oh, you mean about my wife? Ex-wife. Yes, it uh, wasn't very bright of me to try to fool you. No. Look, I told June soon after I met her that I was married. It was a sort of insurance. Stop it all getting too serious. Well, she accepted me on those conditions. Yes. Look, do you know what the salary is for a civil servant of my grade? I mean, look at this place. It's all I can afford. And don't say two can live as cheaply as one. I wasn't going I've to. I've been married. I've had some. I know what it's like. If June thought I was free, if I told her I wasn't married, we'd probably just drift into marriage and kids. And, well, almost whether we wanted to or not. Yes. Well, now, if she meets someone better off than me, she's free. On the other hand, if we find out we are right for each other, well, eventually I can tell her my wife's divorcing me after all. I understand. And so the other night I had to pretend and go on pretending. Hmm. Like a beer? Thanks. Oh, oh careful. Oh, forgotten I'd put that there. Uh, it, it's all right, it's empty. Just trying to tidy up a bit. There's nowhere to put suitcases in a place this size. I mean, can you imagine the two Ms. of us? Miss Coney's place is bigger? Well, I, I couldn't somehow. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Uh, cheers. You know, to tell you the truth, when June went to the police, I was glad, really. Do you still think there was a body? Yes. And I'm sure that he was dead. Then what do you think happened to him? Well, I expect he was a crook. They do disappear, don't they? So I believe. I'm afraid I still can't tell you anything more than I have done. Well, can you remember how he was dressed? No. Well, was he well-dressed? Flashy? No. Ordinary. And about 35 to 40. Dark, did you say? Yeah, that's right. He could have been Irish, dark, blue eyes. What? His eyes were open. Oh, yes, yes, Miss Coney said that too. Oh, short of sending frogmen down in Hampstead Pond, I can't think of anything else we can do. Good Lord, is that the time? I didn't mean to keep you so late. Oh, that's all right. Ah, well, good night then. Good night. Petro! Petra, come in here, will you? Yes, Mr. Coleman. Have you managed to contact Hart yet? No, not yet. Oh, devil take the man. He knows he's supposed to keep in touch. Who's that come in? A uh, bell me, sir. Right, come on in then. What, sir? Have you heard from Hart? Uh, not since yesterday, sir. Uh, all right, Petra, thank you. All right, Mr. Coleman. Well, what have you got there? Well, things have started popping, sir. Uh, first, we got pictures of the man who's been dropping messages. Uh, uh, well, come on, come on. Ah. There you are, sir. Now, that's him there, right in the act. Well, now... You know him? Oh, yes, I know him. That's Vasily Ivanov. Huh? He's supposed to be a cultural attaché, but he's a major in the KGB. Uh, then your man inside is dead. Huh. He, he wants a body, sir. 
That's one problem solved. Well, not altogether. And uh, this is the message he dropped, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, short. Won't take long to decipher. Fancy. Uh, Petra, put out a red tracer to find Hart and tell them to keep on until he's found. Yes, Mr. Cole. Is he in trouble, sir? Well, not from the opposition, from me, for disappearing. We've got to get hold of this Ivanov very soon. How do we do that? Just go in and grab him? There's a refreshing elementary directness about you, Bellamy. You would have made a good uniform policeman. As a matter of fact, you will. Sir? No, oh, never mind. No, we don't have to go in and get him. According to this message, he's coming out. And there they are. Admirably punctual, Bellamy. Sir? Shall I take them now, sir? Uh, no, wait a moment, Constable, till the traffic clears a little. We don't want too many witnesses. I've never felt the collar of a Russian, especially a Russian diplomat. Yes, well, don't make a Zephyrelli production of it. As a matter of fact, I was thinking more of a sort of sub Jean Luc Godard verite. <laughs> I am very properly rebuked, Constable. Ah, now I think. Are you aware you went through a red traffic signal, sir? Nonsense. Vasily. May I see your driving license, please? I don't have it with me. In any case, I have diplomatic immunity. Then perhaps you'll be good enough to show me your passport, sir. I don't have that either. You think a member of the diplomatic corps carries his passport with him all the time? This car doesn't have a diplomatic road fund license. I have my passport with me. Here. You're not driving, sir. This gentleman is. Sergeant, I think we might ask the driver to blow up the bag yes. for us. Yes, I think we might. Uh, would you mind stepping out of the car, sir? I most certainly would. Varsity cooperate. We can complain later. Oh, very well. Would you please blow into this bag, sir, and fill it with one single breath? Here. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Take that thing away. Here, take care. Would you? You saw that constable. He tried to hit me. I saw him, Sarge. You were lying. Fascist. Right, come along into the car. Take your hands off him. He is a member of my country's diplomatic staff. Yes, sir. Uh, come on, sir. Where are you taking him? I insist my embassy be informed. You can do that at the station after we've charged you. Fascist, you will pay for this. I'm going back to the embassy. I'll inform them at once. All right, you can relax now, Ivanov. Your friend's gone. Hello, Coleman. That all went very smoothly. Well done, Bellamy. Most realistic. Sir. And you too, Constable. Uh, Cannon Row Police Station, I think, as our friend is claiming diplomatic immunity. Are you telling me... No, I'm not telling you. You've guessed. You don't have to worry about Bellamy. What about the Constable? Is he all right? Him? Oh, yes. He's not quite what he seems. Um, in the best possible way. Right now. Borisenko suspected me caught me making a drop. So I had to kill him and plant everything on him. Including the code book. Well, that's what made Pelkowski believe me, eventually. Mm -hmm. He didn't know about the security check in the messages, though. The information is worthless, I suppose. Yes. Well, we'll make it look as if we're acting on it. I take it you were being watched when you made those last drops. Yes, we knew you'd heard about the body. Who from? We have someone in the Admiralty. I don't know who. So, Pelkowski was aware you knew about the body. But you couldn't know whether it was your man Borisenko or someone else. Hmm. It was obvious you'd be carrying out surveillance, probably photographic. Yes, of course. So, to keep in character, I had to avoid identification until this last drop. You put in a priority alarm signal. Yes, now listen carefully. I learned that the English agent we, uh, they have on the outside, signals when he has something to pass by sticking a small map pin in the bottom of the door leading to the lavatories at the Spaniards Inn. Two days ago, there was a green pin, top priority. And so I took the risk of contacting you. Someone from the Admiralty is going to change briefcases with Pinkaski. It will contain details of the modifications and communications equipment of the nuclear submarines. Where's this going to happen? London Airport. He's catching a scheduled flight to Copenhagen, then on to Moscow. And it's today. Bellamy, Sir? Uh, call up on the radio, find out when the next scheduled flights to Copenhagen are due out, and if there are connections with a Moscow flight. India Delta Master to India Delta One, 
India Delta Master to India Delta 1, please inform time of departure from London Airport of next scheduled flights to Copenhagen and whether there are connections with Moscow flights. Over. India Delta 1, Wilco. Now what about the man who's making the handover? Or a woman. They're leaving the country today as well. What good? The Spaniards in. Someone in the Admiralty. Oh, Hart was right. Oh, blast the man for disappearing. Bellamy, sir. have Robson and Miss Coney picked up. Yes, now. sir. India Delta Master to India Delta 1. Detain for questioning Harold Robson, Distribution Department Thorley House Admiralty, and June Coney, Department S17 Admiralty, Whitehall. Also check at home addresses. India Delta Master, over. India Delta 1, Wilco. Pity we had to pick you up in this way. It's going to cause a lot of trouble. Your people will act very, very angry. And suspicious. We'll declare your persona non grata. But it'll lose you from London, but it will help diminish suspicion. You'll have to go sleeper for a while. But you can always take up your work again in a new posting in a year or two. I'll be in touch. You never let go, do you, Coleman? I prefer to say I never forget old friends. Ah, Canon Rowe. India Delta One to India Delta Master. India Delta Master. Next scheduled flights Copenhagen. Take off at 1550 hours, connects with Moscow flight. 1740 hours, no connection. 2110 hours, no connection. A message from India Delta 14 for India Delta Master. Oh, come on, come on. Ogre Star 3 left Embassy 30 minutes ago and took M4 westwards. Master Roger out. 15.50, that's less than three quarters of an hour. Ogre Star 3? Penkarski. Ogre, three-star general. I like that, sir. Yes, well, Penkarski's left now. Constable, take the prisoner into Cannon Row and charge him. Yes, sir. I expect he'll want to contact his embassy after that. Good luck, Ivanov. And good luck to you, Coleman. Right, London Airport, Bellamy. You drive, I'll be using the radio. And you can play with the siren as much as you like. India Delta One, this is India Delta Master speaking. India Delta One. I want our man at London Airport to call me as soon as possible on this wavelength. Who's on duty now? Wait. 33, sir. Oh, Stanley Barnes, it would be. Make this grade one priority. Wilco. And keep this channel clear. Your red tracer on India Delta Three. No contact, sir. Roger. I tell you, Bellamy, when I find Hart, I'll crucify him on Admiralty Arch personally. Come out of it, you deaf and blind tortoise. India Delta Master? Yes. Your message re Robson and Coney. Neither at work today. Robson not at home. Coney starts seven days leave, reportedly in Spain. Roger. What's happened with the London Airport call? Going out now, sir. British European Airways announced the departure of flight 725 to Barcelona. Passengers please go to gate number 7. Here is a special announcement. Will the representative of Coleman and Company please contact his travel desk immediately? They might have switched the briefcases already, sir. No, no, they'll do that at the last second. Pinkowski won't want to risk being caught with those sort of documents on him. We couldn't hold him, but it would mean he'd be a marked man, persona non grata everywhere. We could delay the aircraft, sir. Ah, Pinkowski would smell a rat. He'd dodge the contact. Damn rabbit. Now, I want to get Pinkowski with the documents on him and get the person who passes them to him. India Delta, Master. Master. London Airport reports 33 is not answering broadcast calls, sir. Tell him to keep trying. India Delta, one will come. Taking Pinkowski has got to be done at the critical moment, at the train driver. Too soon, there'd be a fearful diplomatic row, and too late, well, he'd trumpet had been framed by the perfidious British and had something planted on him. Here is a special announcement. Will the representative of Coleman and Company... General Penkarski? Yes? Your flight will be called soon, sir. If you'd like to come with me Coleman to the VIP lounge. Of course. Contact his travel desk. In here, sir. I rested by the door. Whatever you like, sir. Shall I take a briefcase for you? No. 
Thank you. Oh, then perhaps I can bring you a drink? Yes, vodka, a large one. How long before we go? Not long. Don't worry, I'll let you know. They won't leave without you. It's going to be too close for comfort. Into Delta Master. New Delta One. Where the hell is that man, Barnes? He hasn't answered the call, sir. Well, keep trying. Out. I don't know who I'll crucify first. Hart or Barnes? Are we going to make it? Look, do try to hurry. Just a little, Melanie. Sir, we are doing over a hundred. It doesn't seem all that much faster than the airport bus. Hell! That was close. Yes, we may make it. I don't know. We have to make it, as long as the tunnel at the airport isn't too crowded. How much longer? Uh, they're finishing provisioning the aircraft now, sir. Matter of moments. At least the tunnel's fairly empty. Oh, for God's sake, slow down, man. Uh, we're not a scheduled flight. Would you like to follow me, please, sir? Ah. Uh, do you have everything? Oh, you won't forget your briefcase, sir, will you? No, I won't forget it. The VIP lounge. This way. That's him. He's going out, sir. Yes, and he's got a briefcase. Now, wait. Has there been a, a handover yet? If you stop him and there's nothing in that case, Yes, but sir. if we let him go and he has got the documents... No, I must. If he's clean, you'll be for the eye jumps. Sir. Oh, won't we all? General... Sir, sir. Barnes, where the devil... Sir, Penkarski. Yes, yes, Barnes, let's go. Sir, wait, it's all right. I mean the general, if you'll just come with me. We can still hold the aircraft now, sir, if we have to. Yes, all right, Barnes, where... Over here, sir. I suggest you start thinking up some reason for your dereliction of duty. Yeah, in here. Good afternoon, Coleman. Hart, I don't think I'll crucify you and Barnes. After all, I'll have you publicly burned. This gentleman with the black eye and torn jacket is Harold Robson, Distribution Department, Thorley House, Admiralty. That briefcase on the table there contains documents he was trying to distribute rather irregularly. We stopped him. I see. Details of communication equipment and modifications in nuclear submarines. Fancy. Now, if you'll be good enough to explain, starting, for example, with why you've been out of touch... Oh, it didn't dawn on me till this morning. When I saw Robson at his flat last night, I noticed a packed suitcase. But it didn't register then. And Tell I was me as a matter of it. interest, how did you know it was packed? He stumbled against it. It was obviously full, but he said it was empty. That was rather a slight cause for excitement, was it not? Then I remembered something he said. He was talking about the body. He said it had dark hair and blue eyes. What is so monumental about the... Uh, oh, yes, I see. That and the packed uh, sorry, suitcase? Sorry, but uh, will someone explain? What sort of street lighting is there where Robson and his lady friend saw the body, Bellamy? Uh, sodium vapour. Yellow. Ghastly. Oh. You couldn't tell what colour a pillar box was, let alone someone's eyes. So, Robson had seen the man somewhere before. He knew what colour eyes he had. And thought it important enough to conceal the fact that he had seen him before. Yes, yes, all right, all right, Barnes. Now, Robson, isn't it? Is there anything you want to say? Nothing to say. Well, if you change your mind, you'll be given every opportunity. Hart? You know, all this didn't dawn on me until this morning, when I was driving towards the office. Nearly rammed a bus. Can we possibly manage without the colourful minor details? I decided to rush round to Robson's place right away and see if he made a break for it. If he hadn't already. And... Uh... And before you ask me why I didn't call in, mm -hmm. have you tried to find a phone box that works in London? I knew Robson might be going any time. Maybe in a couple of hours, but maybe in a couple of minutes. So I had to keep his flat under constant surveillance until I could get through to you without the risk of missing him. And? He came out carrying a suitcase and a briefcase. I followed him here. And arrested him? But I had to. You've seen how crowded it is. I could have lost him. I probably would have done too if I hadn't spotted Barnes and got him to give me a hand. I see. Barnes, you heard the broadcast messages calling for you to report. Will you please tell me why you failed to report? He was helping me to pick up Robson here and keep him quiet. He was quite a handful, sir. Violent and noisy, it took both of us. Really? Now, Mr. Robson, you've been most patient. Is there anything you'd like to tell us? Nothing to say. Like where you got the documents you were going to pass over? Nothing to say. His job was low-grade and unimportant, but it gave him access to high-grade, important material. Oh, thank you so much for explaining. What about the Coney woman? Oh, Lord. I've forgotten all about her. Ah, and what had you forgotten about her? Well, she was booked on a package tour to Spain today. 
So in case Robson had given her the documents to bring to the airport, we took her off the flight and had her searched. And? She's still in the detention room. <laughs> then you'd better explain to her. And get her on another flight. Yes, I'd better had. Well, that seems to be that. More or less. I wasn't expecting an instantaneous OBE awarded on the battlefield, as it were. Not even thanks. But After really, such I a but... botched, inept job of work. I beg your pardon? Do you know to whom he was going to deliver these documents? To General Penkarski. So I rather thought he might when I noticed Penkarski in the doorway of the VIP lounge carrying a duplicate briefcase. Then why didn't you let this, this, this person deliver it? And get both of them? That is a very good question. Uh, it was because, uh, frankly, I didn't want to take the responsibility of detaining someone like Penkarski. With your record for unparalleled intemperance and unconcern, you astonish me. Besides, for all I knew, he might be one of your men, and the whole thing a plant to strengthen his cover. I'm not impressed, Hart. All I know is that a unique opportunity to arrest Penkarski has been criminally wasted. You can always fire me. Oh, I'm not going to give you that happy release, Hart. Right. Bellamy, Barnes, take Robson away. Right, we'll sir, get them right, to charge him with Duck's French. Official Secrets Act. And I suppose you wouldn't care to explain to Miss Coney. She might be impressed by your authority. Oh, she's much more likely to be impressed by your celebrated charm. And don't forget... My office, 9.30 tomorrow. I suppose there is no point in reminding you that you said it wasn't worth following up, Robson, that I stopped the documents leaving the country. Leave the speech in mitigation until tomorrow. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, enjoy your chat with Miss Coney. So I'm no longer under arrest. My dear Miss Coney, you never were under arrest. Now, whatever gave you that idea? Illegally detained, then. Helping us with our inquiries. And we're most grateful. We've arranged a place for you on a scheduled flight and you'll join up with the rest of your party of Benidorm. Actually, it'll be a much more comfortable trip. I still think I'm entitled to an explanation, at least. Yes, you are. Well, I have some rather bad news for you. Harold Robson has been arrested. What for? Official Secrets Act. I'm afraid he was a spy. Harold! Oh, mad! He's... He's so ordinary. Nice and thoughtful. Why? There must be some mistake. We caught him with his hand in the till, as it were. I can't believe it. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult for you. Just because you suddenly say he's a spy, I can't switch off my feelings like that. No, of course not. He was arrested here at the airport. That's why we had to be sure you weren't involved. Look, if you'd like to put off your holiday for a while, I expect I could wait. Here? Up... What was he doing here? Going on holiday. But he didn't plan to come back. But he told me he couldn't get leave. That's not the only lie he told you. He's not married, either. What? He was divorced five years ago, and... Divorced? Yes. Ever since we met, he didn't have a wife? No. Oh, those stories about his unhappy married life at home, his, his wife who didn't understand him, they're all lies. Look, I know. I've got my car here. Why don't not we just pop... Married. No. No, thank you, Mr. Hart. Will I be required to give evidence? No, I shouldn't think that would be necessary. Well, if I am. Now, what do I do about my flight? Uh, are you sure? Quite, you... thank you. Besides, I think a holiday would do me good. There's a ticket for you at the BEA desk. Oh, women. Petra? Yes? Edward Hart. Is your 24-hour comfort for the troop service still in operation? Business or pleasure? Pleasure. Hmm, <laughs> definitely pleasure. That was Dead Drop by Max Marquis. Edward Hart was played by Eric Lander. Coleman by David Garth. Harold Robson by Nigel Antony. And June Coney by Patricia Gallimore. Production was by Christopher Venning.